Praise the Lord. Amen. You are tired tonight? No. Can you rise up a moment? I saw some of you even jumping up. Or somebody is still sitting down. Praise the Lord. Amen. We need to thank the Lord for the reports and the testimonies we have heard. The good Lord who did all those things is still with us today. And he can do that through your life and through your ministry as well. If you will allow him to walk in your life, to walk through your life, things can change in your locality. Things can change in your nation. And things can change in your region or your state. Just give him a chance to work. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you today. We bless your name for the good reports of your marvelous words that we're hearing. Lord, we hear these things so as to challenge ourselves that we're still at work today. Like we sing, our God is still alive. Our God has not changed. He's still ever the same. And Lord, we bring ourselves to you again, believing that what you have done through one minister, you can do through all the ministers. We have learned yesterday that already you have appointed us, you have anointed us, and you are going to approve our ministries. Therefore, Lord, we pray that this year will be different for every one of us in Jesus' name. As we invite your children, men and women, to come and walk with you on the water. I pray, O oh Lord, the courage, the boldness, the faith to come out of the boat and come on the water and walk with you. You grant us that courage, that faith in Jesus' name. And we pray that you will use your people. Everywhere we go this year, you will do wonders. Your name will be glorified. Sinners will be saved in their multitudes. And the church will be built up, edified. The church will grow. Speak to your children tonight. Encourage our hearts. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I don't think we have too much time. But very briefly, we are talking about de dealing with the demonized and the possessed. Dealing with the demonized and the possessed. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and verse 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I'm sure that these verses are not new to you. But I just want to remind you once again, that as Jesus spoke these words, one thing that you notice very clearly is the use of the plural. These signs shall follow. Which means then, if God has allowed you to see a miracle, remember that is not the end. Because it says these signs in the plural. Which means then, as you go on in ministering, 
And as you are going from place to place, the signs will be following after your ministry. But then it says, in my name shall they. You see that's in the plural. I'm just trying to emphasize to you that this is not the day of a superstar. This is not the day of a single evangelist, a single preacher, a single apostle, one in Nigeria, only one in Ghana, only one in Sierra Leone, only one in Liberia, only one in uh, Zambia, only one in Togo. This is the day for the multitudes of the people that believe on the Lord to realize that this is the promise made to every one of us. They shall cast out devils. They, not just one person, shall speak with new tongues. They, not just one, shall take up serpents. When we talk about some isolated cases, we talk about T.L. Osborne. We talk about John G. Lake. We talk about uh, some other people. And you have one isolated case there, one isolated case there, one isolated case here. That's not the real perfect will of the Lord. Because he didn't make the promise to just an individual. But that they will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick. Not just one person being used of God to pray for the sick. They shall lay hands on the sick. And the sick in the plural, they shall recover. And so as we come to the message tonight, you realize what the Lord is telling us. That you and I, we have something to do. To manifest the power of God. And to help and to deliver the demonized and the possessed. I believe we can do it and it will be done in Jesus name. Because of time, let's go to the points one by one. Number one, diseases and disaster caused by demons. Diseases and disaster, they are caused by demons. I'm sure you realize not all diseases are directly caused by devils or demons. But there are diseases, of course, that are caused by demons. And we cannot say every disaster in the world is caused by a demon or a devil. But some disasters are caused by devils and demons. If you look at Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, verse 32 and verse 33. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. You will see the connection there. He was dumb because he was possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. The connection is very clear. There wasn't any special prayer for the situation of being dumb to be corrected. But just the devil was cast out and the dumb spake. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. The implication is very clear that the dumbness had been caused by the demon. In chapter 12 of Matthew, verse 22. 1222 then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil blind and dumb and he was and he healed him in so much that the dumb the blind and dumb both speak and saw the situation here was caused by a demon being deaf or being dumb here or being blind that's why there are times you will hear those who minister to the dumb, those who minister to the blind, they will say, you spirit of blindness or you spirit of dumbness, come out. And they might not even worry to say, you blind eyes, get opened. 
And then you'll find that those eyes get opened, telling you or showing you that the situation had been caused by the evil spirit dwelling, possessing that individual. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed, troubled, tormented with a devil. Here we have the torment and the torture caused by demon spirits or evil spirits. In Luke chapter 13, verse 11, Luke 13, 11, and behold, there was a woman that had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. The implication here is that the condition of being bent low, not having the ability to straighten up and look up, it was caused by the evil spirit. So then you understand from scripture that evil spirits can cause sickness and can cause deformity of one sort or the other. And now we need to assure ourselves, if you are a child of God, you don't need to be afraid that the devil will bring something upon you. If you remain under the blood of the Lamb, and if you remain the temple of the Holy Ghost, and if you are glorifying the Lord in your life, you do not need to say, well, I think maybe I have an evil spirit. Really, you shouldn't have an evil spirit if you are really in the Lord, covered in the blood of the Lamb. Look at First John chapter 5 and in verse 18. First John 5, 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. That wicked one touches him not. We don't have time. I would have explained to you. But this is enough. That if you are a child of God, you keep yourself. So that the wicked one will not touch you. We're told in Isaiah 59 and verse 19. That when the enemy shall come like a flood. The spirit of the Lord will raise up his standard against him. If you are a child of God then, you are protected. And we're told in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16, They that are with us are more than they that be with them. And in 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, Little children, you have overcome them because greater you see that is in you than he that is in the world. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, it says we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of of his dear son. However, if you backslide, if you go into occultism, if you go into satanic demonic activities, and you are no more under the covering of the blood of the Lamb, then the evil spirit can attack. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16, and in verse 14, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and that now gave an opening, an entrance to the evil spirit. An evil spirit then from the Lord troubled him. But if you stay in the Lord, and you stay with the Lord, that wicked one has no right to touch you. He will not touch you. He cannot touch you, and he must not touch you. In Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 22, verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. 
Well, I'm sure you are not a Judas Iscariot, are you? Well, if somebody becomes a Judas Iscariot, and he leaves the Lord, and he loves money more than he loves the Lord, and he wants to sell the Lord, and he backslides, of course anything can happen. But for those of us who are under the mark of the blood of the Lamb, our lives are completely protected. Point number two, deliverance from demons and diseases. Deliverance from demons and diseases. Now when we talk about deliverance here, uh, we're not talking about delivering children of God. We're talking about delivering the people that are there over there in the world. And they have demonic spirits and evil powers tormenting them or troubling them. And we can bring the watch of deliverance to them. And we can minister to them. You have already heard some testimonies. And um, I say these things to encourage you. And I'm believing that after this uh, Congress, your ministry uh, will become more powerful in Jesus' name. And I want to encourage you, don't think about your strength and don't think about your ability. All those testimonies you heard now, actually the program in Togo was uh, planned uh, in a way that it was a little bit inconvenient. But all things work together for good. Uh, to them that love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose. Because actually in Nigeria, in Lagos here, uh, we had quite a heavy program. And I pleaded with the overseer in Togo. I said, my brother, look at my program. Things are so uh, busy for me that I will not be able to make it uh, in, uh, at the beginning of August. And um, I said, all through August, uh, things are completely busy. And I wouldn't have time to prepare myself. I wouldn't have time to, you know, come over there and do this kind of big thing we're talking about. And I said that, uh, except we're going to make it in October or in November. And uh, he was saying that, uh, you know, our French people, they will not be on holidays at that time. And uh, can't you just manage uh, some time for us in August? I said, well, I have a youth uh, program here. And uh, that youth program will go from uh, Tuesday to Saturday. And then the following Tuesday, I will start another youth program here. The only days I have will be from that Saturday when the youth program here finishes and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. I must finish with you on Tuesday and run back to Lagos for the uh, youth uh, program. And he said, that's all right. Uh, we'll take that. And so I will say all through the uh, time. And when you are ministering to those uh, young people, it's not like you are ministering to adults. You have to, you know, demonstrate a little, shout a little, and make them happy. And they shout and you shout uh, to make the meeting alive. And uh, what they didn't know, those young people, is that when I finished with them, I was going to run to Togo. And with all the shouting here, I almost lost my voice and, you know, my strength, physical strength. And then I dashed down to Togo. And by the time I got there, I was wondering in my own mind that, uh, oh God, have mercy. Because uh, these people now, they have heard about me and they'll be expecting some, you know, great, great things. And then I prepared my messages and I will come. And at the time I'll be there, you know, in, in their thousands. And it's not in a covered me place like this, it's in the open. And when you are preaching in the open like that, and you breathe in the air, and you breathe out, as you are talking, you easily lose your voice. So you easily get tired and worn out. Uh, but eventually, I will, you know, preach and give the message. And then while the people are, you know, for the altar call, I might call somebody and say, hey, my brother, take over the altar call and pray for them, tell them how to be born again and all that, so as to get a little strength and breathe a little. And then I will come back there now, and I will look at my wristwatch and I will say, Lord, keep me active and keep me excited for just about 10 minutes. And so these people will not know that uh, their pastor is tired. And uh, so with the, with the gauge of the 10 minutes, I will say, Lord, let's go at it now. And I will, all the shouting I could do for the 10 minutes before I, you know, get off, I will do the shouting and say, praise the Lord, it's there now, you've got it now, you've got it now. And I'm telling you some things really happened. Why do I tell you that? I'm telling you that not to look at how you feel, not to look at your strength, not to look at how your program or your time is tight. You will do marvelous things. You will do great things. The Lord will use every one of us in Jesus' name. 
And now as we talk about delivering those who have disease and those who have demons, do you know you are going to do it? I said, do you know you are going to do it? Now in Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9 verse 1, then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all devils. Mark the word all. All devils. There should be none of the devils, none of the demons that should resist your power over all devils and to cure diseases. The time is now for you to do it. In Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, And I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? Now, if you believe that, the Lord is going to test you. Let me explain. You get on the crusade field. And then you preach the message of salvation. Always be faithful. Make sure that you tell the sinners how to be born again. And that's what, by the grace of God, I do. And then I say, I'm going to pray for the sick now. And I tell you, because you are leaders, and because I want you to know how to get into this kind of thing. And then sometimes while I'm waiting on the Lord like that, I don't mean going up from the pulpit, just on the pulpit here. And then I'm praying. Before I start the prayer, while well, the people are praying, the congregation is praying, I wait on the Lord a little, and I release myself to the Lord and ask him, Oh Lord, how do I start? Which one do I start with? Because, you know, if you start with the blind, and you say, now you are going to pray for the blind, if you prayed, and no blind eye got opened, the next prayer you are going to pray, nobody is going to expect anything. They will say, well, he prayed the first prayer, what happened? And so I will receive from the Lord and say, Lord, what do I start with? And I will know what he has told me. And then I will say, everybody keep quiet now. And when I say that, it means that one day I had been praying, I had been praying. And then I had the key already. And the key is to open the door. And when you open the door, that's the beginning. That's the initial act for the other things to follow. And then with that key now, with the reference I read to you, he has given you the keys of the kingdom. I say, everybody now, if you have this problem, this problem, this problem, raise up your hands. And then as they raise up their hands, then I will pray. Here is the test. As I pray, I will say, now check up there. The Lord has done it. Well, I don't just say that. I, you know, I believe the Lord has really done it. And it's not just empty faith. I really know the Lord has done it. And sometimes the whole place will be quiet and nobody will move and nobody will say praise the Lord and nobody will say that anything has happened at all. But I will not say any other thing. I will not move on to the next point. I will not move on to the next prayer. I will keep on staying there because I know, you see, that short period of quietness is a test. For you to know whether you have really opened the door with the key or not. I will stay there and say I'm waiting for you. Check up. I know you are there. You are going to discover it. And if they don't talk, I will just keep on, you know, I will just stay there. Because I know something has happened there. Because if I accept defeat on my first prayer, guess what is going to happen in the second prayer? And in the third prayer. And so, after about a minute of dead silence. Then somebody there will say, praise the Lord. And I will say, don't just praise the Lord. If you are really sure, come out here. And then they start coming out. And as they start coming out, in the minds of the rest of the people, then they begin to say, looks like the power of God is working with this man. Looks like if he prays for me, I will get an answer. It looks like the thing will work. And after those people have, you know, gone to settle down, I will say now, the next problem, and those people are going to have faith. Learn how to minister. That already you have the key in your hand. And you will depend upon the Lord. And the little short period of testing. That the thing may be totally quiet. You will not give up. You will know that the Lord will do it. And of course you must be sure. You can't play any game with the Lord. In uh, chapter 16. Matthew verse 19. That we have read. And I, I will give unto thee. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. 
And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatsoever. I said whatsoever. Can it happen? It will happen. Uh, you know, there is something that uh, encourages me actually as I read the scriptures. I discover something which I want to tell you. That the devil knows the people that have authority and power over him. Since I got to know that, it gave me confidence. And no matter where I'm going, I just tell myself, even before I get there and before I do anything, the devil knows the people that have authority over him. And the demons know the servants of God that have authority over them. And so whatever I feel and whatever I don't feel, since I know the devil knows the people that have the authority over him, I just get relaxed. How do I know that the devil knows those who have authority over him? Don't you know that any time Jesus came to minister, the people that have the evil spirit will say, what have we got to do with you? You are the Jesus of Nazareth. And we know that you are the Holy One. And what have you come, have you come to torment us? They knew him. And then you know when the sons of Skepha, when they were telling that uh, evil spirit, come out of the man, we adjure you by the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached. The man with the evil spirit said, Jesus, I know. Okay. That means then, they know the one that has authority over them. And then he says, Paul, I know. You know what I learned from that? Paul was not there. Paul was far away. Paul was not ministering there to that person in particular at that time. And then he said, you are not Paul. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. The implication is that if Paul were to come here now and tell me to get out, I will not say anything. I will have to go out. But you don't have that power. He was telling that fellow, not you. He was telling that fellow and then he jumped on him. And then, don't you know then, if you really have the anointing, if you really have the power of God, the devils, they know you already. And if you have that anointing here now in this Congress, as you go back before you get back, they already know. And the things that other people are doing and they cannot succeed, when you get there, you will succeed in Jesus' name. Therefore, you will deliver the oppressed. You will deliver those who are possessed. And those demons, whatever they are, whoever they are, whatever they are doing, you will set the people free in Jesus' name. Now, uh, after you have delivered, got somebody delivered, I need to tell you what you will tell the fellow so that he will keep that deliverance and he will keep the healing that he has got. Number one, now you have manifested the power, you have manifested the key, everything is okay. The fellow is healed and the fellow is delivered. You need to counsel him, help him, so he will keep it. Number one, he will confess and forsake occultic sins and involvement. If he had been involved in occultism, in witchcraft, in sorcery, uh, evil spirit, whatever, he will confess and forsake. Proverbs 28 verse 13, number two. He will renounce Satan and he himself will break any covenant he has with the evil spirit. If he made any covenant that was going to die at a particular time, any covenant that he will not get married in the normal way, any covenant that he will not have children in the, the, in the real life, any covenant he made with the evil spirits, he will break the covenant. Number three, he will destroy occultic materials whether in clothing or book or any other material that he has in his possession and he will stop going to any shrine going to any herbalies he will stop going to occultic places acts 19 18 and 19. number four he must believe in christ and confess the promises of the lord which cannot fail because Christ, because of Christ's finished work at Calvary. He will constantly confess the word of the Lord. And it's the word of faith. Because the word that goeth out of my mouth will not return void. It will accomplish that for which it is said. 
Therefore, you encourage that individual. You have been delivered now. Therefore, keep on confessing the promises of the Lord. Five, he will study the scriptures to develop his faith. Because hearing, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And then it's by the shield of faith. He'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Number six, he will resist all the symptoms and negative suggestions coming from the enemy after the deliverance and now he is free. Don't allow him to come back the second week. Pastor, I need deliverance again. That's a waste of your time. And that is not scriptural. Don't allow anybody to make coming to the prayer warriors a ritual. They are there this week. They are there the following week. They are there the following month. They are there every Sunday of the year. That's not scriptural. You don't find that in the New Testament. Let them get delivered once and for all. And teach them how to keep that deliverance. Otherwise, they will be wasting your time. And otherwise, you will be making a mockery of real deliverance. Let him know how to resist all symptoms and negative suggestions of the enemy. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, give no place to the devil. Tell them that. That after they have been delivered, they will not give any place to the devil. Number seven, be in fellowship of true, lively believers. In fellowship of true, lively believers. And then let prayer be simple. Let prayer be just communication with the Lord. Like a friend talking to a friend. A child talking to the father. That the fellow will know how to have the presence of the Lord. We see him all the time. And is positive having confidence in the unfailing promises of the Lord. I go to point number three. Dominion over all demons. Dominion over all demons the lord created us to have dominion because we are kings and priests who are washed in the blood of jesus christ in ecclesiastes chapter 8 and in verse 4 ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 where the word of a king is there is what there is what Okay, I said that because of those who are still writing. Now, where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? You should have that confidence that you are a king. And that you are from the royal family. You have been bought by the blood of the lamb. And you are established and you are destined to reign. Therefore, the word of your mouth is a word of authority. He has given you the power already. And where that word of the king is, there is power. And there is no demon, and there is no disease that can say unto you, What doest thou? I believe you have this dominion already. Number one, you are covered with the blood of the Lamb. And you know when you are covered with the blood of the lamb, the devil recognizes that blood, one, that he cannot pass through the bloodline and come and attack you and afflict you. Two, that blood covering you is like a uniform that shows how much authority you have. Uh, have you seen sometimes a policeman? A policeman sometimes will wear normal, ordinary shirt and trousers. And then he will put only the cap. The cap that shows that he is a policeman. And although all the other clothing that he's wearing may not show that he's a policeman, just the cap and just the rod in the hand will show that this is a man of authority. Isn't that the same? When you have the mark of the blood of Jesus upon you, one, they cannot pass through the bloodline to afflict you and to torture you. Two, it's like the uniform that makes, that marks you out. You have authority over them. You have dominion. Number two, the written word proceeding out of your mouth will come with power. Once you mention the word, 
age is reaching. The devil will not be able to survive that. Just the word. It is written. Therefore, arm yourself with some pungent promises of God. Word of God. Take the very words of Jesus and then voice them out. Because you are in Christ and Christ is in you and the word will work in your mouth as it would have worked in the mouth of the Lord. When you say it is written. Number three, the shield of faith will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And you'll have to stand your ground. You will not shake. Your confidence will not shake. You know that you have been given authority and you have the shield of faith and you know it will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Number four, the name of Jesus in your mouth will make all knees to bow and bend before the Lord. They must, they must submit. You will not take no for an answer. And don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the demons deceive you. Don't let any demons speak back to you and say, we are very many here, and we're too strong, and you cannot do anything, and uh, you are not the one that will cast us out. Go and call the region of Asia, then we will listen to him. And if you go to call the region of Asia, uh, that devil, if he knows you are going to listen to him, he will say, ah, 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 ah. See the one you have gone to call. This region of Asia, he has not fasted for seven days. Go and call another region of Asia. Then you'll be looking for an overseer that has fasted for seven days. And no overseer that is following the Bible will raise up his hand and tell you that I fasted for the last seven days because the Lord said he shouldn't tell anybody. And so, you see that if you allow them to deceive you, you'll not be able to have authority over them. Once you give out the word of command, don't withdraw that word. Just maintain that word and say, you will come out and they will have to come out. Because of the authority of the name of Jesus. Number five, you hold the key that binds and you hold the key that loses. And your authority cannot be challenged by any demon. Did you hear that? Your own authority cannot be challenged by any demon. Number six, you are in union with Christ. And that union is not just a positional union. It's a practical union in ministry. Actually, you are ministering together. Whatever you bind on earth, he binds it in heaven. You just take the initiative, whatever you lose on earth, it loses it in heaven. Number seven, when you pray, Satan and demons tremble. Because, I told you before, they know the names of those who have authority over them. Do you have authority over them? Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke Chapter 10, verse 19. Please read it now. Read it yourself. Okay, close your Bible now. Close your Bible now since you've read it. Put your Bible down, stand up. Quickly, quickly, quickly. You know, it's something for somebody to want to give you something. It's another thing for you to receive what he's trying to give you. In our many meetings, in our many retreats, in our many conferences, the Lord has been trying to get your attention. Saying, behold, pay attention. I give unto you. But have you really received? Why do we allow the Lord to stretch forth his sign so long? And then we will not receive. And then we go back to our locations. And the people that are suffering, the people that are tormented, they are still being tormented. And then we say, I cannot do anything. How about what Jesus said he gave you? Now tonight is going to be different. 
when you are giving something, it's a mark of honor, a mark of respect to the person that is giving you that thing to take that thing from him. And when you take that thing from him, then you will go and make use of what he has given you. And so I believe tonight you will receive what the Lord is giving you. And uh, please, uh, don't mind my illustration. Because I want to help you. When the Lord gives you this kind of thing, you may not feel taller. You may not feel very bold. You may not feel that anything has been added to your life. Uh, some of you who are married already, if you are married, can you raise up your hand? Okay, those who are not married, I will tell you our experience then. Uh, when you get into it, you will understand. Before you got married, and you were looking forward to that day, and you are saying when the wedding comes, it will be a wonderful thing, and you felt you are going to feel so high, so happy, and you know you are going to feel all sorts of things, and then you go for the wedding. Funny enough, you go to the altar, and then who gave this one to this one? All the you know formalities. And then you put your hand in paper. And then you come out. And then it appears that you are feeling, you are thinking, you are going to feel as if the whole joy of the earth will so fill you. You will be mad with joy. You looked so normal. As if nothing really happened. And you pinched yourself. Have I got married? And then uh, the second day, even after the marriage has been, you know, contracted and everything done, and uh, the lady will still be wondering, am I miss or missus? Because you thought the joy was going to be so much that you will not be able to contain that anybody that sees you uh, in Ikeja or uh, Onicha will say, the way I'm looking at your face, you got married yesterday. But it doesn't happen like that. You are married, but sometimes you don't feel so high. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, when you have the power tonight, it says, I give unto you. Then you say, thank you, Lord, I receive. You may not feel anything. You may not feel that you are taller. You may not feel that you are bolder, but the power is there. And then when you go out, whatever you feel, you challenge the devil, you drive away the devil, the power of the Lord is there in your life. Receive that power now. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Please. Today, you must step out in faith. We have waited in this region of weakness long enough. The time has now come. Brothers and sisters, you are not getting younger, you are getting older. The period of opportunity to minister is getting smaller and smaller every day. And the challenges are out there. And if you are going to begin to manifest authority, it must start one day. And this is the day you make up your mind. I'm not going to waste time again. I'm getting started now. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, we're going to do it in a formal way. I want you to picture yourself now. I'm bringing you now to the altar. Picture the marriage altar. Close your eyes. And as I bring you out there now, understand? You are going to finalize this thing by just those two words I do at the marriage altar. And once those two words are pronounced, whether you feel different or not, whether you feel electric current in your body or not, whether you feel fire or not, whether you feel cool water in your body or not, 
whether you hear a voice or not, once you reply, I do. In that marriage altar, that's finalized. The same thing tonight, I bring you to the altar of the Almighty. And here is Jesus Christ now in front of you. Your eyes close, visualize him. He's right there in front of you. Now he says, behold, stretch out your hand. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you brother I ask you sister I ask you you are going to answer in only two words I do do you receive this power that Christ is giving you now That finalizes it. In Jesus' name we pray. Lay your hand upon yourself now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the transaction tonight that is settled and finalized. Now you have given your daughters, your sons, all your children, you have given them power. You have given them authority. You have given them the key. Now they can go back and open every door that has been closed. Yeah. Now they can go back and cast out devils. Yeah. Now they can go back and heal the sick. Yeah. Now they can go back and open the eyes of the blind. Yeah. Now they can go back and cleanse the lepers. Yeah. Now they can go back and do mighty things in your name. Yeah. You have given them the power. They have received the power. It will work mightily in their lives in Jesus' name. It will not be in vain. It will perform real exploits in the field of evangelism. On the crusade field. In the church. Healing the sick and delivering the oppressed in Jesus' name. You have made them kings by the blood of the Lamb. And I pray that their words will carry authority. I pray you also give them gifts to go along with the power and authority you have given them. Give them insight. Give them revelation knowledge. Open their eyes spiritually to know what to do at any time. So that they will bring deliverance to the oppressed in Jesus name. Perchance, if there be anybody here tormented, sick, oppressed by evil powers, or there is any curse, we break that yoke right now. Yeah. Set all your people free in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord, I pray that from today, your people now will act. As people who know they have signed the contract with those two words, I do. They will not behave, they will not talk, they will not act that they used to do in weakness. Like a married man, a married woman, feeling or no feeling, knows that now he's married, she's married, and will not talk like she used to do. I pray that these brothers and sisters will speak new language. The language of authority. Yeah. The language of power. Yeah. Give them the conviction, the courage, the assurance. The devil already knows that they have this power, they have this authority. And therefore, I pray that they will be effective in ministry in Jesus' name. 
I pray that all the people that have been bound with any sickness, you set every one of them free. Now make the mighty instruments in your hand to go and search other people.